My name is Sean Leonardo. I'm an artist. I'm represented in the exhibition Radical Presence, and honored to be here, and honored to be in the exhibition. Since I'm in, thank you. Since I'm in the Fabiana seat, I'm also going to stand, because <laughs> I'm a performer, you know? How does the body wear trauma, is my one and only question. My most recent performance, I Can't Breathe, is a public participatory performance framed as a self-defense workshop. Audience members come, I ask them to participate, and I teach them a range of maneuvers, how to get out of a hold, how to get out of a grab, how to defend a punch, and that culminates with the chokehold, the same chokehold that took the life of Eric Garner. And I can't show people how to get out of a chokehold, because that would require going on the offense, and that's not my job. That's not my role. But what I hope to do is teach people how to create just enough space to breathe. It then seamlessly transitions into a performance by giving them cues, the participants' cues that are within a script, words by Nina Simone. And so with these cues, the participants enact the, the self-defense techniques and it becomes an overall composition or movement that becomes a meditation or is a meditation and reflection on our community's need to self-preserve, to self-protect and to survive. But for some of us, especially young people of color, that survival mode is a constant. That's a day-to-day -day experience, whether it's being surrounded by crime in the housing developments or walking through metal detectors at school or the constant agitation by police. That fear, that sense of danger, that aggression lives within. And so I conduct that performance because I hope that people will internalize the tragedy of Eric Garner's death in a different way, and that they leave the room no longer not able to talk or feel about that event in a different way. But for young people of color, we now know, we're now discovering that that heightened alertness of always feeling in danger is something aligned to PTSD. That the trauma lives and pervades everything, every interaction a person may have, right? It's like that, that sense of always being on guard, that something is gonna go wrong, that someone's gonna hurt you and someone's gonna take advantage of you. That's trauma and repeated trauma. But I want to go beyond that to understand, beyond how this affects people's ability to deal with one another, and again, thinking about our young brothers and sisters of, of, sisters of color, how that makes folks unable, literally, to assess a situation correctly because they're always expecting aggression, violence. But I want to move beyond that to understand what happens in the moments where a person is alone. How does it live within? How does it play out in the body, the way that the shoulders slump, right? The way that your hands don't operate correctly. The blank look of disengagement that we see in these young folks' faces the inability to be self-aware and the impossibility of being present in one's own body.